And for a deep dive into the state of the U.S. economy, let's bring in Ryan Patel. He's a global business executive and senior fellow at the Drucker School of Management at Claremont Graduate University. Ryan, uh, welcome back to the show. Um, I want to get your reaction to Powell's testimony. He doesn't seem phased by the, uh, the numbers. Well, he's pretty much telling you, let's check back into me in six months. And that's what was clear to him because, he, I mean, he did make a statement, and maybe it was subtle, but to me what stood out was, he expects the inflation uh, fears or causes to be dropped in six months, which also sets up a very interesting conversation that what if it doesn't, and then what do you do? So he seems pretty very confident that um, that the inflation rise will is just a temporary aspect of it where, you know, we got a lot of news in the last couple of weeks, um, especially the last few days around consumer price index rising. Um, obviously, the wholesale prices where business pay jumped up 7.3% in June uh, that U.S. government just released. And so uh, it was a very interesting take of his that he acknowledged that there is an issue, but he also said, well, there's a reason to that. If now it will, it, we'll see if he's right in the next six months. Yeah, it was all sort of very, uh, you know, don't worry, be happy, although he, he didn't look too happy testifying. But yeah, let's check in later, as he said. Uh, he didn't mention the Delta variant. Uh, and we're talking about what happens in six months. Uh, it seems to me that he's thinking we're on our way out of the pandemic. Um, should the Fed be concerned about a spike in cases based on what we're seeing elsewhere in the world? Well, I think he's hoping, right? And I think if you saw what the Fed had, re you know, if you if you recall in the U.S. last March or last year um, when the, the variant hit or where COVID-19 hit, you know, the Fed was kind of on the fence a little bit, and then it made a huge move in the summer of last year for for to making those changes. So I think they're really very aware of the things that they made these drastic changes or these needs to the interest rates keeping low to help the recovery process. You're right, there's a, an assumption here that economic, you know, economic folks will look at to say every everybody's assuming nothing is going to change and this is how we're going to get out of it. So I'm not what I'm trying to say is if there is a blimp on the Delta variant and the economy takes a hit, don't be surprised if that six months turns out to be, well, we've got to hold out a little bit more and got to keep interest rates lower. Yeah. You know, most Americans are not numbers people. They're not listening with a fine tooth comb for everything that Powell says, but they are feeling the pinch in their wallets. Uh, how, uh, how concerned should they be about these rising numbers and potentially about uh, the long-term effects of inflation? Well, I mean, there's a lot of different sectors if you break down, right? Restaurant costs went a little bit up, but still manageable. If you think he, he talked about the real estate costs that went up to 15% last year for 2020, and he actually thinks, um, you know, it, it, it's even with if you're messing with the interest rate, still wouldn't affect the, the supply and the demand. Um, I, you know, when you look at the consumer price overall, yeah, you're going to see a little bit going up. I, it's hard to say in the short term. I think long-term consumers would be more worried about, like, is this price going to stay there? I think the resilience of the, the consumer right now with the savings and the, just in general what people are seeing, I think they can manage, uh, most Americans can manage the short-term aspects to it. But to your point, if there's a long-term inflation rate that continues to increase and you can't get it under control, that's an issue. What about the, the labor market? So many businesses have posted these help wanted signs. Uh, what can be done? What, what should be done to promote workers into accepting job offers? Well, this is a big portion of this conversation, which I know he couldn't get into more details, but from a business aspect, from organizational aspect, businesses need to offer more than salary. The overall package with benefits, if it's childcare, education, or time off, like these things that weren't done before pre-pandemic, even to the hourly worker, they're important now. You know, McDonald's just came out, the U.S. franchisees um, of McDonald's, which is 95% of the stores here in the U.S., they came out with a higher wage you know, plan, you know, more benefits, and the, it, it caused the U.S. corporate um, office of McDonald's to say we'll invest another couple million dollars to support those uh, um, you know, initiatives. And why I'm telling the story is so important, you're taking a franchisor and franchisee of a major corporation going, we got to solve this so you can recruit and attain people because there is that shortage. It's great to see that there is a demand and, and to food and these other aspects, but if you don't have the people to give that consumer experience, you won't make revenues, and that's an issue. The stock market, should we expect uh, numbers to continue climbing? <laughs> well, your guess is by my guess right now. I mean, everyone's on, you know, the earnings season has, has, has gone well. I think part of what the long-term view is, what I always look at is, you know, how fast the international markets are going to open up. 
the supply chain piece, that will really determine how much more smoother um, that the revenue streams and just consumer travel will be, will be. You know, you can't keep at this kind of bubble effect for a longer period of time. But, you know, I think everyone's looking at expenses um, specifically around, you know, re retaining talent and also the strategic perspectives of how to grow that revenue stream as well because you can't keep it the same for year over year.